Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. I've got another arcade project here and it's a big one. In fact, this might be, probably will be my last arcade project while I'm in this space. And the reason for it is, well, you can see this is a huge cabinet. This is technically a dynamo cabinet, but amongst the community it's known as a big blue. And you can see why. It's a giant cabinet, it's huge, it's a beast, and it's blue. A uh, duh. So, I'm really excited about this one. This is going to be my Street Fighter 2, and I'll explain why. Uh, this cabinet I have the most nostalgia for. I remember playing on these the most in the, the mid-90s or so, early mid-90s, and mostly Street Fighter 2 and, and a bunch of the other uh, CPS2 Capcom games. And so this is pretty much Capcom's cabinet that they used, at least here in the States, throughout the, the early to late 90s. And there's probably, I want to say there's like 10 variations of this cabinet. There's a bunch, you know, some uh, don't have, you know, this is a later generation. And this one has what they call like kind of like the detached marquee. There's also a variation of this that, that's a much taller marquee. And then there's, there's cabinets before this that didn't have a detached marquee. It just, you know, was part of the cabinet. And then there's variations prior to that that didn't have the, the Q sound, which is kind of like a pseudo stereo, uh, 3D-ish stereo sound. Uh, so there's a lot of variations of, the, of this cabinet. And I really wanted this one because this is the one I remember playing Super Street Fighter 2 and Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, two of my favorite iterations of the game the most. I always saw it in this cabinet. In fact, it's featured in the flyer. And it's also featured in, I believe, the Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Flyer as well. They had the bigger marquee, but, you know, this has the, the standard size. But anyways, on top of all that, there's also footage online. Uh, um, a couple of my buddies participated in, I think it's the first official Capcom-sponsored Street Fighter, Super Street Fighter 2 tournament back in 1994. And they had a gazillion of these cabinets. In fact, you can see in the footage, they're just lined up cabinet after cabinet after cabinet. And they're all this model. So I was really set on getting this one because that's the, the game that's most important to me to throw in here. And coincidentally, when I looked at the serial number on the back, on the tag, you can see that it is, in fact, a, originally a Super Street Fighter II cabinet. So that's a long-winded way of explaining that I really wanted this style of cabinet, and for whatever reason, these are really popular here in the Midwest in the 90s, but for whatever reason, ever since I've started keeping my eyes open for one, I haven't seen one. And so I actually had this one shipped all the way from Georgia, and of course with fuel prices it wasn't cheap, but I'm super stoked about this. And so, yes, I'm going to throw Street Fighter 2 in here, but it's going to be more of a multi, and I'll talk about that in a second. So what I like to do with any project is start out by making kind of a to-do list, kind of assessing the cabinet, what I'm going to need to do to restore this and get it looking nice and pretty much finish the project. So starting with the exterior, uh, this cabinet is really solid. I was actually quite surprised. The base is in good shape. All the corners are sharp. There isn't a lot of structural damage. And so as far as like repairing the wood, there's not a lot to it. But there's enough scuffs and scrapes and scratches and uh, deep blemishes that are down to the bare wood. And in the front, there's lock bars. Actually, this is the first cabinet I've ever had, I think, that actually did have lock bars because this was on location in an arcade for a bit. And so I'm going to have to patch those up. And, and, and there's some other areas that, that need a little bit of bondo and, and, and patchwork. So it's enough to trigger my OCD, which is kind of a bummer. I was hoping to avoid that. but it's gonna happen. And this cabinet's made out of melamine. So it doesn't have a vinyl on it. It's not laminate, but it's a uh, hard wood with a really hard finish to it. And it's almost, if you actually touch it, it's almost like a laminate. It's a very, it's a very almost like a plastic hard finish on, on top of it. And that's what all the blue is. And so initially I was thinking before I knew this was gonna be a melamine cabinet, Initially, I was like, well, you know, I can just, uh, you know, patch up those areas and then maybe find a paint match for it and just spray it. But that's not the case. So I'm probably going to go with laminate. And 
There's a lot. So I mean like the control panel, um, I don't need to do anything up here, this is perfect. So there's areas that I don't need to, to do much with it, but both sides need laminate, the front needs laminate. So that's probably the first order of business. The other thing I noticed is that this cabinet has three, mat three hex bolts on each side of the cabinet. And then it's got this big hole on the right side that's been covered with like a black disc. It's, it's just been kind of um, covered up and I, it looks like it's glued down there. And so I was kind of puzzled about that. Like, is this factory or what? And then I remembered that in the flyer for, for Super Street Fighter 2, they allowed um, four cabinets to be linked up to, play, to have like an eight player tournament edition of the game. And so after doing some research and talking to the folks on the forums, they kind of confirmed that. And then they also confirmed that this cabinet was also used um, for Saturday Night Slam Masters, which was a four player game, two on two, if I recall, and two of these cabinets would be linked up. And another verification that this was used in Saturday Night Slam Masters was the metal bracket under the control panel has spots for third player and fourth player. So you can kind of get a sense there that this was a cabinet made to be linked with another one. So that was pretty cool. And so I'm just gonna leave that hole, I think. I might um, do something temporarily so that it makes it easy to apply the laminate, but that was pretty cool to find out. So other than the laminate, obviously the T-molding's gonna need to be replaced. It's pretty chewed up in some areas. Uh, the control panel has has a bunch that's gonna need to be removed. The um, In general, most of the T-molding is in rough shape. So that's easy peasy. However, this cabinet has a lot of T-molding. I mean, it's not just the size of the cabinet, it's also the control panel. It's also on the marquee box at the, on the sides. So there's a lot of T-molding. I don't know how much I'm gonna have to order, but it's a lot. <laughs> Other than that, most of the metal pieces I'm gonna take to have powder coated. And there's quite a few of those, you know, the coin door, the brackets on the control panel, possibly the speaker grills, uh, the marquee brackets. You know, some of them are in pretty good shape, but then there'll be spots of rust and it's just easy to just throw all this in, in the same batch, have it all powder coated and it all matches. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna need a new marquee. I'm gonna need a new control panel overlay. So I'm gonna need the artwork. And actually I just ordered most of my artwork. I, I got the control panel overlay, marquee, the generic red Capcom side art, as well as uh, the chrome Capcom decal that some of these cabinets have right on the front here. I'm definitely going to need to do something about this plexiglass that's on the control panel here. It is beat to hell. There's cigarette burns everywhere. There's chips out of it, a huge chip out of the front here. It is just in really rough shape and it's, it could be more flush. So it'll just be easier to cut something new. I think I'm going to go with a Lexan, which is going to be more durable than plexiglass. It won't chip as easy. And because it's stronger, I think I can get away with something thinner. So this is a quarter inch. I think I'm going to go with an eighth inch Lexan. See how that goes to protect the artwork. But what, you know, I'm not too worried since this is on, isn't on location anymore about the artwork really getting damaged from, you know, abuse. But, uh, but since there's, since these came with something on them, I'm pretty sure that, I don't, I don't know if that was factory or not, but all the pictures I've seen have the holes for the Lexan or, or Plexi on top. So I'll just stick with that. Uh, I will be replacing the joysticks and buttons. I've already got those here. There's still gonna be bat top sticks, but I really like these Hori Hayabusa's. And then I've got some some other buttons. I, I can't even pronounce the name, Semutsa? Semutsa, someone will correct me. But they're flat top buttons. And so I've got that all, all covered. I'm gonna to have to do some routing underneath the control panel because they, they're not as deep as these are and it's a really, it's a three quarters inch thick wood panel. So I'll just have to route out some, uh, some holes to recess them a little bit, but not a big deal. I do need to throw some new locks on the front, but other than that, that's pretty much it for the exterior. The interior on the other hand is a different story. Uh, this is gonna need a lot of TLC. At the bottom of the cabinet, there's 
a bunch of like broken glass, there's old tokens, all the normal fun stuff, some micro switches, a pile of micro switches actually. And then there is something going on here with two power supplies. There's, there's the one that looks like the original HAP styles, you know, big switcher power supply. And then there's an old, like, or uh, your standard Peter Chow power supply that has been piggybacked onto that one. And I think I know what happened. Uh, I'm guessing that the DC side of the original power supply took a crap. And so rather than replacing the whole power supply, the operator just decided, well, this also has the power switch on it. So let's just piggyback off that AC and go right into the Peter Chow, Peter Chow power supply so that that will take care of the DC voltage. I've seen it before, uh, in fact, uh, in a Mortal Kombat cabinet, and it's just a rat's nest. It's just ugly. And, and you know, the the icing on the shit cake is the, uh, the electrical tape on the exposed wires. You know, you got to love that. So I'll replace that and clean up all that wiring, take care of that, that power supply uh, like it should. I'll be pulling the monitor so I can rebuild that. It looks like it's probably been recapped in the last couple of years, but I like to do everything my, myself and it's just a nice baseline. I know that it was rebuilt recently and then I can kind of go from there. Uh, it needs to be dialed in. It's got a really nice picture. There's no burn. The uh, geometry needs a little, little tweaking and the colors definitely need some work. The, it, there's some oversaturation. It's not white balanced very well. So I'll go in and I'll spend my OCD hours of <laughs> tweaking that and getting the monitor all dialed in and nice. Other than the monitor, I need to pull out the PCB. Uh, there's two boards. It's a, with the CPS2 stuff, there's a A board, which is like the motherboard, and then the B board, which is like the cartridge that stacks on top of it. And that A board has a fan in it. And I don't know if you guys can hear this uh, picking up with my mic, but I don't know if you can hear that, but it's a high pitched whine. And that little fan in there is super loud. I've got the doors on this thing and it's still pretty loud. So I'm gonna see if there's an alternative. Like I'm sure someone has found a quieter fan. Otherwise I'll go on DigiKey or something and see if I can throw something else in there just to keep the noise down a little bit. Um, this game utilizes a stereo sound. It's got what's called Q sound, which is kind of like a virtual 3D effect. And there's a specific amp inside there um, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna rebuild that or not. There's a ton of caps, but they all look clean. And the sound for the most part sounds great. So I may or may not rebuild that. If anything, I'll just give it a good cleaning. I'll be replacing the marquee light. The, it's got one of the cheap Walmart specials of a fluorescent tube and, and ballast in there right now. So I'll replace that. I'll probably go the route of like an LED tube. I, I really like those. Or I'll do something like I did with, with Super Punch-Out, but I like the cooler white i think it just brings out the color more and things don't look as yellow and i know for some of the the folks that you know swear by originality that's fine to each their own um, but the nice thing about leds too is that you don't have that heat so i'm, I'm probably going to do that and i alluded to multiple games in this so what i'm going to do is there's a kit out there called the dark south multi kit and that allows you to play all of the CPS2 games on the original hardware. It basically just rewrites the ROMs, if I'm understanding this correctly. But essentially, you can play any game that came on this hardware platform. And so I've already got that kit. I'm going to do that so I can play all the CPS2 stuff, which includes Super Street Fighter 2 and Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. And, you know, board prices are so ridiculous right now. To put it in perspective, if I just wanted Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, that board is probably gonna command at least 350 bu bucks, maybe more. And the Darksoft kit, is, I think was like 600 bucks. So it's kind of a no brainer. And then you have access to all those other games. So I'm gonna do that. But then I'm also gonna do the Mr. FPGA solution, which, will, um, which is an FPGA. Uh, basically, it's hardware emulation and it's very, very accurate. It's gotten high praise throughout the community. So I'm going to throw that in here as well with a JAMA switcher. And that way with the Mister, I can play all the CPS1 stuff, which for me is like the older Street Fighter 2 games particularly. So World Warrior, Champion Edition, uh, Turbo Hyper Fighting. So 
I'm going to do that and then I'll throw all that on a JAMA switcher and so I should have the best of both worlds, essentially. That's the plan at least. We'll see what happens. And I think that's about it, but... Oh wait, no, I actually need to modify this cabinet so that I can stream and direct capture from it, just like I've done with all the other games. So that'll be the very, very last thing I do. So I think that about wraps it up. It sounds like a lot and it probably is, but all in all, the cabinet's really solid. So, and the game works. It's always nice to start from a working game with any of these projects. So. You know, everything's pretty straightforward, so I'm hoping I can hammer this out within a few months. We'll see, like two, maybe three months. I would love to have this done before the end of the summer, so we'll see. But uh, anyways, I think the next course of action is basically gutting the cabinet, like remove the control panel, the marquee box, the pull the monitor, all that stuff, so I can start doing some cosmetic work. But uh, that about wraps it up for this part one, and I'll see you guys in part two. Wow.